Hello friends and fans, delighted to be back with you for another Central Control tutorial. In this one, we're going to be looking at the SuperSource Animator feature, which is built into both the core and studio versions of Central Control. But before that, what is this? Well, if you've ever used Blackmagic Design 8M Mini Extreme or maybe Constellation Series Switcher, you'll know what the built-in SuperSource function is. This allows you to create box layouts, but the one thing it's lacking is a means to manage these presets and animate between them. Step in SuperSource Animator. So looking at my setup here, I've got a Blackmagic Design 8 Mini Extreme over here, and I've got four inputs coming into it, and I've got a very simple layout that looks a little bit like this. And what I want to be able to do is create myself some presets that I can easily access and then animate between them. So how do we do that in Central Control? Let's take a look. So I'm going to start off here with a completely blank project, and I'm going to start by adding a module to the project. To do that, I'm just going to click the Add Device button, and I'm going to search for the device I want. In this case, of course, it's the Blackmagic ATEM. Just going to type ATEM in. Uh, that's the one. I click OK, and I'll add it to my project. Some parameters on the right hand side for this module, only the IP address in this instance. So I need to know the IP address of the switcher so I can connect to it. If you're using the auto discovery functionality on the switcher to connect in their software control panel, it will actually tell you this just by clicking on ATEM software control, then connection. And you can see as I've got it selected, you can see what the IP address is. So I'm just going to type that into central control and toggle the module on to enable it. If it doesn't enable, you've probably got something wrong with your network configuration or the wrong IP address, but as is connected, so we'll move on. To access the SuperSource Animator tool on the modules tile itself, I'm going to click the SuperSource Animator button, which will open up this window. Just created it, so I've got no presets at the moment. So let's start by adding our first presets. Now, none of the design of the presets is done in central control itself. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the Blackmagic software, we're going to create a look and then essentially take a snapshot of that look and that will become our preset. So let's switch over to this shot here where we can see the super source output, the software itself, and regrettably myself. So coming back over to this, so we'll start just with one of the default layouts built into the switcher, and I'm going to click Add Preset. I'll give it a name. We will name this Four Box, and click OK. And you'll see it's created a snapshot. I can see the preview there of what it's created. And let's add another one. I will start off with another one of theirs. This time, we'll modify it a bit. So I'm just going to shift him a little bit off screen because he is quite irritating. And then we will shift her a little bit to the left. Just like that. And then once again, I will click Add Preset. Now, I really hope you'll spend more time thinking about the look of these, but just for speed, I'm going to just make one more preset. There we go. And I'm going to click the Add Preset button. Now I've got three different presets that I can play with. So let's take a look at how that works. I'm going to just click between these, and you'll see as I do, it updates the layout on the switcher. If I decide I'm not happy with one of these and I want to modify it, it's as simple as activating it again. Then I can just move the box to the desired position. And then simply click on this update button and it will take another snapshot of that layout into the system. Now we're doing cuts only here, which is a bit boring. So let's take a look at the effects section. I've got a whole bunch of different effects in this list. I've got smooth, accelerating, decelerating, and linear. Let's try accelerating, and I'm just going to click between these two presets, and you can see the effect. I can modify the duration, so if I change that down to 300, as I click between these, it's a quicker effect. 
bit too quick, but that gives you a basic idea of how it works. Now, because we're kind, in the video description, there is a file that contains 44 pre-made layouts, good for all kinds of productions. So let's take a look at how we can now import that into our collection of presets. Going back to the software, I'm gonna click the import button here. And you'll see on my desktop, I've got that very file. Double click on that and you'll see it's imported loads more presets that we can play with into the system. And as I click between them, you will see it's animating using the settings we'd already selected. I can very easily access these presets and go between them with all these different effects. Cool, we've got that, but maybe you don't just wanna use this interface on a touch screen or even your computer you'd probably rather have some kind of tactile control of the system. And to do that, I've brought with me today an Elgato Stream Deck. The way we're gonna lay this out is I'm just gonna use this solely for the purpose of these presets. So I've got 15 buttons on here. And what I'd like to do is on each of the 15 buttons, I'm gonna have a preset. And then to give me a visual representation of what that button's gonna do when I press it, I'm going to assign the preset icons we saw in the software to the displays on the Stream Deck. So looking at that, let's come back over to Central Control and everything is a module. Everything is a module in the project, the building blocks, if you like. I'm gonna click Add Device to add myself another module to this project. And this time I'm gonna search for Stream Deck. I'm going to click OK. I'll leave it with its default name, but if you had multiple, you may wish to name these differently. Click OK. And in this section on the right here, you will see we have some parameters for the Stream Deck. The only one I'm interested in today is selecting the Stream Deck I want to use. I've only got one connected to this Mac, so I know it's that one. I'm going to select it. And then once again, we will hit the on toggle to turn the module on and you'll see as I start pressing buttons on it the controls button helpfully blinks to indicate that that is the module that is receiving input. How do we create a link between the Stream Deck and the presets we've made? Well I want to assign the controls on this Stream Deck to the preset so I'm going to click the controls button on the Stream Deck module, which will now take us into our mapping interface. You'll see all 15 buttons for the Stream Deck are there. I can set the colors and the text of the buttons. We won't be doing that today because we're gonna put the preset icon straight on the key. So in the bottom section here, this can be thought of as the target module. What module would you like to assign to the button? And then below that is the list of corresponding commands, functions that are available for that module. And you can see I've got loads of different commands here for all sorts of things like setting the preview in the program, taking the keys on and off. But today, all we're interested in is this one, set super source preset by index. I'm gonna select that. And you can see as I select that, I've got some parameters on the right hand side here. First is the super source input. We're only using an ATEM Mini Extreme today, so it's only got one super source, so we're just gonna leave it at one. The preset index, that is the number of the preset that we wish to use. Transition, I can select different transition for each of these buttons. I'm gonna leave it as smooth. And then duration, I'm gonna set this to 750, because I think that is a nice, comfortable duration to have my preset at. Then to assign this, I'm simply gonna come in here and we will enable this quick assign toggle and I'm gonna go down the list of these. It will, as I click the assign button, it's gonna automatically go down my list of buttons, incrementing it by one, the preset by one each time so I don't have to go in and manually do that. A button, big time saver. Keep on clicking until I get to button 15. And as you can see, I've now assigned all of those presets onto the buttons. So let's take a look at how this works. So 
You can see here there's no label, so I don't really know which one is which just yet. But as I start pressing these buttons, I'm now animating through those presets with the parameters that we just specified. So it's a smooth transition and it's 750 milliseconds. So we've got the control side assigned. We can press the buttons and we can activate a function. But how now can we set it so we can see what preset we're gonna we're going to end up with when we press that button? To do that, I'm going to assign a separate functionality onto the display type. So if we come back to central control here, I'm going to change this in the top left from button to display. So I'm now looking at the 15 displays that the Stream Deck has per key. And you'll see it's already got selected here in the ATEM module, this get super source preset by index command. And we're going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to be, I'm going to change the preset index back to one because we want these to match up. We want the icon to match up with the preset we're going to be using. So back to one, I'm going to once again turn on this quick assign toggle. And what that's going to do, as we saw, is automatically go through the controls every time I press assign and bump up the preset index by one. So same process, I'm going to click this 15 times. You can see on the right there, it is in fact incrementing the preset index. Get to 15, add that one. And if we look at our Stream Deck, we'll see that currently there are no icons on it and with very good reason. Central Control only sends a image to the Stream Deck for efficiency when it is updated. Now, after you've just mapped it, you won't see anything on it. So what is the best way to quickly get all our keys appearing? All I'm going to do is I'm going to come back into Central Control. I'm going to toggle on and off the ATEM module. And as I turn it back on, you can see that all the icons have now appeared on the Stream Deck. So this time, as we press our button, so if I press the two button, there it is, just as it appears on the key, I can see that preset will do the one, two, four, one. There it is. Three, four. The one, two, three, four, that look. And I can very quickly see what I'm going to be, end up with when I press the button. It's all there for me on my Stream Deck. Not just restricted to Stream Deck, you can, of course, map your presets to any device in central control. So X keys, MIDI controllers, all of that sort of stuff works absolutely fine. And if you are using Companion, you can use the HTTP input module so you can even access these presets straight from Companion. That's about it for this video. The link to the preset file is in the description. Central Control Core and Studio both have this functionality and have a 30-day free trial. At the time of recording, can't promise it's still the case, Central Control Core is in fact on sale at just $39. So don't miss out on that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.